Hey, I'm Andrew. Um, welcome. We're going to give you a, a little tour of a tiny house here. Total, I built this whole thing for probably under $25,000 and we're based here in Washington at kind of an undisclosed island. This video is sponsored by Drink Element, a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't, so you feel and perform your best. Get a free sample pack with any order and try out all their flavors by clicking the link in the description and going to drinklmnt.com forward slash florb. And remember to subscribe. I'm from Wisconsin originally, and that's sort of where I started building houses. I have a lot of handy people in my family, carpenters, engineers. A couple of friends of mine sort of steered me towards boat building. A friend told me about this school here and uh, moved here a couple months later to enroll in that school. One of my best friends around here acquired this 10 acre property. I had, had spent a lot of time on this property already and, and got the offer to live there more or less for free if I wanted to. I was living in a covered skate ramp in a hammock. So that was a big part of the motivation for building this house. I'd been helping other friends build tiny houses and after that winter I just really needed to uh, focus on myself. I did this enormous deck remodel, took the entire deck that we'd replaced home with us. Bought all my windows at a, at a secondhand store. I designed completely around the windows. And that's how you can kind of build things to be affordable, you know, like spent a lot of time just putting the right pieces of wood in the right spots. I've been able to pull a lot of stuff out of the woods to use in the building. So yeah, it's, it's just part of being creative, you know, finding nice pieces of wood that like speak to you. So this is just the little campground zone that I provide for guests, which, you know, is just the extension of the tiny house, basically. This is obviously the front of the house. There's a little um, bump out there just to provide a little, uh, you know, shelter when you're in and out of the house and storage space on the inside. Yeah, and then we got our little pathway here to the little composting toilet. When you live in a tiny house, you're in such a contained space. I spend very little time with this, in, you know, on a day to day. So like, it's really just not a big deal for me. You know, you can have a nice view and uh, listen to the birds. But yeah, this, basically this window is, is a big part of what um, started the design on this building just cause it's enormous. So not many places you can put a window that big in a tiny house. Um, and then that's, the bathroom, the shower is right on the other side of that. If you don't have a window in your shower, it's wonderful like being able to open a window and just see the outside, hear the birds, watch the rain, like, yeah. I don't think I'll ever have a shower without a window in it again. I don't know why everyone doesn't. <laughs> this is basically just to give a little more privacy to the, to the guests when they're here. So I got my propane for the stove right there. Pretty simple. Gray water tank from the sink it goes into this tank and then I, Siphon that into my into my septic system. It's not illegal around here to water your garden with your gray water, but with food scraps and everything going into the sink, it started getting gnarly to where I didn't want to water my plants with it, but it is a really nice option in a lot of places. My main water is coming out of this nice little, actually I'll pop this open and show you this unit. There's just a frost head under here. I just built this little thing around it to make it look nicer and to insulate it in the winter. My water comes and is insulated under the ground and then comes up through here. It freezes here maybe two weeks a year. So that takes care of that. You know, I have like a heat wire wrapped around my hose, which, which keeps a good, um... yeah, so this is like the main plug-in for the entire house. Um, and that goes to a little service panel with, uh, I think, four circuit breakers on the other side of this wall. And that's just outdoor power. And then the propane for the water is here. So I have a separate propane for the water and for the sink, which, you know, I probably go through three five gallon tanks a year in both my sink and my shower and hot water. This trailer, I think it was a car hauler. So you have to build over the hubs, basically. Really doesn't matter what kind of trailer you have. The best trailer really is a free trailer. For me, I just wanted to start with a brand new trailer just because this was like, at the time, the biggest project I'd taken on for myself in my life. So I just, and like, I don't, I don't discourage getting a brand new trailer. Like, if you're gonna put the time in to build a tiny house for yourself, like, you might as well start with, uh, with a good trailer. Most of the wood on the outside I did like buy from a local cedar store, but like, all of the window trim 
All these corners is from the big deck remodel in Port Townsend. Beautiful old growth cedar. The deck was originally built in 1980. Come on inside and I'll show you a little more of that wood here. Just beautiful old growth cedar. You can't even really get wood is that dark, that cedar anymore. Like, I mean, it looks like walnut. It's as dark as walnut, but it's, it's all old growth cedar. The ceiling is like book matched, basically like the same piece of wood on both sides, kind of like mirroring, if you will. I recently put this unit in here, a 110, very minimal power. Um, the idea behind putting this bench here was, you know, storage. This is like the biggest spot that I have in the house for storage. I mean, as you can see, there's like a lot of space in here, um, which can be used however, you know, one would like to use that space. When I was working in the boat yard, my uh, old uh, mentor, if you will, Aaron, someone had given him this slab and he gave it to me. It's a slice of a madrona tree. Over the years, I've just been like filling in the holes with epoxy and like adding varnish. I've made a lot of these over the years, just um, big and grain cutting boards. And then like these countertops, I guess I wanted to make the, the most high maintenance countertops possible. Like I've had to do a little bit of restoration on, on this. A lot of this material, I've there's, there's so many secondhand stores everywhere. Like if you live close to a city, I didn't want to build the door. So I bought this door for 30 bucks or something like that. Um, yeah, so this is the tiny little, uh, I don't know, I call it kind of a full bathroom. Doesn't have a sink in it, but you know, you got your small shower with, and honestly the window makes it feel bigger. Put a really nice shower floor in which, it just feels really nice on your feet, you know? With this being such a tiny shower, it's probably 70 bucks. And that's another thing about tiny houses, like material's never gonna cost you that much because everything is so small in scale. This flooring here, I got it at a store and they only had a very small amount, so it was like very cheap. You definitely have to um, treat yourself here and there. Myself, I've never, never once used this toilet. You gotta have kind of a small butt to even like make this work, but um, mainly this is just used for, um, for people to pee in. Originally, none of this was here, and I just had uh, climbing holds, which some guests have thought were peepholes. Um, that's a whole another story, but kind of wanted to make it easier to get up and then also just creating another storage space. These steps are kind of cool. They're just literally just like slices of a four inch slices of a tree. And this is also like one of my favorite places to sit right here. You got the armrest and yeah, usually when I have people here, cause we've had probably 13 people in here at the most. You can fit a lot of people in here, but yeah, this is just another really great seat here. Getting up into the loft is a little funky, which, uh, you know, keeps some people from staying here. But yeah, once you're up in here, it's really like being in a, kind of like being in a tent. I don't know, great view from up here. A lot of people tell me they've never slept as good as they, as they sleep up here, so. It had kind of morphed when I was building it because it wasn't long enough to have a bed. So I ended up like having to bump out this little loft space, like a foot and a half to be able to fit a bed in here. But it ended up being really cool um, having this little extra bump out just to make the house look a little more funky on the outside. <laughs> you know, like people ask me where I live and I don't consider where I live a, being a house. I live, you know, here on this island, like, I just think it's kind of funny when people ask you where you live, it's, it's more of a complicated question than like, where, where do you dwell? Or like, same when people ask you what you do for a living, like, do you go right to the work that you do? Or do you go to what makes you happy? The, the recreation you do, like, yeah. I mean, I've tried to kind of build a life where I don't need to go to work every day, you know, work where, and don't get me wrong, I love woodworking, like, uh, you can probably tell by just what, what I create. Um, but yeah, that's just trying to find a deeper meaning to life, basically, than, than your day-to-day -day, um, going, going to make money kind of stuff, you know? And don't be terribly intimidated, you know? Like, you can build a tiny house with very, very minimal amount of tools, probably $500 worth of Milwaukee battery tools. You can build a house and like, learn how to use tools, watch YouTube videos, like, I mean, it's funny coming from me as a builder, but like building, building's really, really fun and it's really not that hard. And I feel like people that are intimidated, 
that haven't built should build. I kind of taught myself a lot of skills, like as far as plumbing, electrical, tile, stuff like that. Like it's a great opportunity to to build your skill level, and then and then you get to live, you know, live in what you've built. Like that's it's kind of priceless, like living in something that you've crafted. Drink Element is at it again with an exclusive offer that you're not going to find publicly available anywhere else. And the best thing about this offer is that it is available to both new and returning customers. So if you've tried Element before and you love it, you're in luck. Making sure that you have the proper amount of electrolytes affects hundreds of functions in the body, including nerve impulses, hormone regulation, and nutrient absorption, just to name a few. Impossible symptoms of electrolyte deficiency include headaches, cramping, fatigue, and sleeplessness. So if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, you're going to Want to give Element a try because Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. That means a science-backed electrolyte ratio. Element is offering you a free sample pack with any order as long as you order through the link in the description. Element sample pack includes a packet of every flavor so that you can find your favorite and share it with your friends. And the best part is that Element offers a no questions asked refund on all orders. You don't even have to send it back, so there is zero risk of you trying it out. So click the link in the description and go to drinkelement.com forward slash Florb and try it out today and get a free sample pack with any order. Thank you for watching and have a great week.